Welcome back to Let's Play Max Payne. It was freaking crazy. The cops were doing a full scale siege next door. More traffic than rush hour. I mean, bleeding bastards running back and forth, Ronnie and Jimbo to throw. And in the middle of all this, there we were. I didn't give a damn. Just going with the flow. So what happened? Nothing happened. We got the explosives, dumped the cargo, and we were home free. Jeez. That was a great story, but you forgot about the part where I just come in and kill all three of you. Oh man, I love this game. I love it how the bad guys could have conversations with each other. They always have something funny to say. I can't imagine skipping them. Why would you want to? A winter storm warning is in effect in the whole tri-state area, as both freezing rain and heavy snowfall continue. Many roadways are already closed, and people are advised to stay indoors. The severe blizzard has ravaged New York for three days now, with no end in sight. We'd been snowed from the start in the Valkyr case. The forecast said there was plenty more where that had come from. But the snowbound city was on my side. Less chance of innocent bystanders getting caught in the crossfire. Luckily for you, Max, there are no civilians in this game. Unless you count the cop back at Roscoe Street who was killed opening the door for us. Because if he would have died before he opened the door, then it would have been a game over. Well, let's run away. That was pretty cool. Roll across the door and shoot him. Killed him in style. Time to break some boxes with a puny lead pipe. I don't really see the point in this weapon. It's not really effective. Ingram ammo. Now that weapon's gonna be really fun to use once we come across it. What the hell? What the hell is right? Exhibit number one, a newspaper. A dead man tied to a chair lay on the boiler room floor. Captain Baseball Bat Boy has an unbeatable track record in superhero death matches. <laughs> but a six pack of root beer gets me every time. The murder weapon was a baseball bat now lying in a pool of drying blood next to a newspaper folded open on a Captain Baseball Bat Boy comic strip. Wow. I can't wait to meet the person who did this. Why are they always set in L.A. or Mexico? They can't even get a tan. If I was a bloodsucker, I'd move to the North Pole. Went this one long night. Yeah, and what would you eat? Suck blood from penguins? Nah, Eskimos, man. Eskimos. Okay. They're talking about vampires. It's a bit random. And if you look up here, there's a Beretta. I don't know why, but I can't take it. I have too much ammo already. But let's crash this party. You gotta love bullet time, man. This is the best thing about Max Payne. But yeah, Captain Baseball Bat Boy is actually a TV show in the second game. It's not in the first game. It's also a TV show in Max Payne 3, though I think they ruined it in that game. Chill with the guns. Trust me, you don't want to piss me off. Gentlemen, let's do business. Green for green. Tears of green-eyed angels. Amen. Now this room is fun. This is where the deal is going on. I always take a Molotov to these guys, but one time I played this part as a kid, I threw the Molotov, hit the door, and burned myself, so I'm gonna have to do this right. There we go. A lifetime ago, this would have gone down as a narcotics arrest. Stop, drop, and roll, fellas. You learned that in kindergarten. There is a key on the table. Damn, that's one huge key. It was dirty money. That's a lot of money. Come on, Max, take the money. You know you want to. Who cares if it's dirty? You can buy all the painkillers you want. The transparent cylinders glowed green, full of Valkyr. I'm doing New York City a favor by keeping drugs off the streets. It looks like that one wants to stay alive. Ooh, Molotov. One more try? Yes. No Valkyr, it's bad. Anybody in this bathroom? No, but toilet paper. And it's green. 
Everything is green in this game. What's that say? 555PSSY. When you want to do more than just talk. Two mad dog killers, ready to murder each other. They step into the next room, and I'm thinking, now they're gonna do it. <clears throat> but no. They sit down in front of a TV and solve their differences with a kung fu fighting video game. I tell you, Candy, I was so depressed, I strangled them both with the video game cables. Oh, Rico, you're so bad. I am, ain't I? Mm, mm. Rico Muerte, big time hustler. Who the hell? It's that cop. Muerte went for his gun. That was graphic. Do something. But yeah, let's take the dual Berettas on these people. And we have to kill the hooker. What a terrible day. Whoa, there's four of them who just came out of nowhere. Oh no, I'm gonna die. Oh, that went well. I'm gonna do a quick save just in case she kills me. Oh, all right, let's try that again. You know what, I'm gonna burn you. It's cheap, but effective. Oh, this one's a badass, she has flames in the back and everything. How am I gonna take this broad down? There we go. <laughs> Hello, Rico. And he still has his pants down. Really, man? Pull them up. I guess when he was done killing me, he'll go back to his business. Only to find out his business is no longer with us. Alright, he has an ingram. Which is dangerous. That could kill us in just a few shots. You see what I mean? Okay, I am going to shotgun him. I'm gonna have to kill him this way. Max, do not reload. Especially when you're getting shot by an engram. Whoa, that was close. Alright, he's reloading. Shoot him. Shoot him while he's reloading. There we go. Oh, I gotta deal with these guys, too. That was a pretty cool kill from far away. Why are there so many ashtrays around? Everywhere you go, you breathe smoke. It's not very healthy. The antique switchboard was still in use. There was an old telephone switchboard in the back room of the reception area. The kind that made phone tapping child's play. It wasn't hard to picture a fat pimp sweating with headphones on, listening to his hookers talk dirty and fake orgasms over a web of party lines, the blood veins of New York. Right now, there was a different set of moans and groans going on. Boss, I got you. This Max Payne. He came, started capitalist. He killed him. was out. A deadly virus released into the city's corrupt circulatory system. Something wicked this way comes. Max Payne at large. Vinny is quite the character. He's a walking disaster, so to speak. I mean, that guy could F up a cup of coffee. didn't win. Max is not a winner. Anything in this bathroom? Any painkillers for me? No. Call that number, Max. Blow up some steam. You think you could take 
my money? You know who you're dealing with? Huh? Do you? Do you? Calm down, man. It's just a game. You should go to an AA meeting. Wait, that's for alcoholics. Ooh, bullet to the head. That's how you do it. Real men drink Casey. Casey. Hmm. I wonder. I just wonder. Uh-oh. Gunfight. Use the engram. Ooh, I want to pick up your engram. That means I can have double engrams. But I can't use them anymore. They're all dead. Gotta love how the bullets are in slow motion. You can actually see the smoke trail behind them. That's so cool. But yeah, this is the end of the chapter. Just press the button and go through the double doors. Leaving a whole heap of bodies for the cops to find. Where shall we go, Max? Turn around, walk away, blow town. That would have been the smart thing to do. Guess I wasn't that smart. Lupino's tenement buildings were a seedy hangout for all kinds of sleaze. A liquor store, a pawn shop, a laundromat full of mobster bookies and loan sharks. The list went on. The how and why of it was a mystery to me, but they knew I was a cop. They knew I was coming, and they were going to get real trigger happy about it. I got to see Lupino's hangout all lit up. A bomb went off, turning snow into liquid gold. A pillar of fire lifted the remains of a car straight up into the air. The flames were highlighted on the hood of a black Mercedes Benz as it coasted down the street real slow, as if the driver didn't have a worry in the world. I got a good look at the man riding shotgun. It was Vladimir, the head of the local Russian mob, the fly in Don Punchinello's soup. The ringing in my ears was the sound of a mob war being waged. Another bomb exploded inside the closest slum building. It was a lucky break. The goons inside were spooked, but luck always came with a price tag. More bombs could still be ticking inside, and the cops would already be on their way. Jack Lupino's suite was on the top floor. At least it used to be, before the explosive makeover. Alright everybody, we're gonna end it here. Next video, we head into the slum buildings. Until next time.